The quick collapse of France during World War II was a shock to many in the world, as the main continental threat to Germany was now gone. Its vast colonial empire was largely administered from a German puppet government known as Vichy France, and there was a major worry from the Allied High Command of antagonizing the French puppet government enough that they would openly fight against the Allied forces. Even still, many actions were taken to cripple the power that this puppet government had, and one of the major examples of this is a campaign that is seldomly talked about, yet posed a major operation, and was the first major combined force operation during World War II. In today's video, we will be looking at the Allied invasion of Madagascar. The French had annexed the island of Madagascar in the late 19th century, during the Franco-Hovo Wars, which I have a video on the channel already about. The power that controlled this island would have massive influence not only over the region, but it could assert naval influence all along the Horn of Africa. The fall of mainland France in mid-1940 shocked many in the world, who expected a repeat of the slow, grinding attrition of the First World War. With France occupied, a puppet state, Vichy France, was created. This government oversaw the vast colonial empire that the nation wielded, yet protection of this was dodgy at best. The Vichy state was largely unable to transport men, supplies, or armaments outside of North Africa, and the colonies outside of North Africa didn't have the capability to work with each other over such a vast distance. Twice before, a foreign power used this weakness to their advantage, with the Japanese invading the territory of Indochina in 1941, and the Franco-Thai War also in 1941, and also a video I have up on the channel already. It was sort of a fear by both sides that antagonizing this puppet state too much would shift their pseudo-neutral stance to the other, and bring a still rather strong colonial power into their enemy's fold, so major action against the state only occurred later. In East Asia, the Japanese had been steadily pushing the British further and further back, with them now reaching the crown jewel of the British Empire, India. Following the British withdrawal from Burma, Japanese subs were moving freely through the expanses of the Indian Ocean, and Japanese aircraft carriers conducted many raids in the Bay of Bengal and against towns in Sri Lanka, pushing the British fleet to base themselves out of Kenya. The Japanese hosted the longest-ranging subs of the Axis powers, with them having an effective range of over 10,000 miles. It was feared that if the Japanese managed to get bases within Madagascar, then Allied lines of communication and supply routes could be hit all the way in the South Atlantic. This would have been a major threat to the Allied war effort. The Axis, in turn, saw the same advantage. German Admiral Kurt Frieke and Japanese Admiral Nokumi Nomura met in Berlin to discuss a way for the two navies to work together in some capacity. Frieke stressed the need for naval action in the Western Indian Ocean and around the South African Cape. By April the 8th of 1942, Japan agreed to send six submarines and two auxiliary cruisers into the region, but beyond that, they didn't inform the Germans. The Allies had heard rumors of Japanese plans in the area, and feared that the Vichy government would grant Japan the whole island of Madagascar, or at the very least, grant them docking rights in the island's harbor. Against this threat, Charles de Gaulle, the leader of the Free French Movement, pleaded with the British government to act at the time. British resources were stretched thin, and the faraway island was seen as a drain on valuable resources. Not only that, but the Vichy forces were somewhat substantial, numbering 8,000 men, 6 light tanks, 4 warships, and a 35 air unit contingent, the latter bunch which could threaten landing operations. Eventually, Churchill did agree to the operation, but following de Gaulle's failure previously at the Battle of Docker in 1940, this operation would be British-led and British-operated, it would be dubbed Operation Ironclad, with 15,000 men, 10 tanks, and 50 ships being amassed for this operation. 
The Battle of Madagascar would be the first British amphibious landing since the disastrous Dardanelles campaign of the previous World War. The invasion started on May the 5th of 1942. The plan called for four beach landings on the northwestern side of the island. Then, they were to march 20 miles to the port of Diego Suarez, attacking the port defenses from the rear. It was thought that Diego Suarez was the key to the whole of Madagascar, and if that port fell, then the remaining French forces on the island would be compelled to surrender. On the Vichy side stood Governor General Armand Leon de Enette, who had roughly 8,000 men under his command. A third of his men were stationed within Diego Suarez itself, but the rest were heavily scattered around the island. While his army was in decent shape, the naval and air defenses were rather lacking. As Net only had eight coastal defense batteries, some very light naval ships, and only a handful of fighters and bombers. The initial British landings meant virtually no resistance, and the coastal batteries were taken with few casualties. With the assistance of 12 light tanks that were landed, the British managed to advance nearly 21 miles to the naval base at Antasurane, a location which was heavily defended with trenches, readouts, pillboxes, and flanked on both sides by impenetrable swamps. On the morning of the 6th, the British attempted a frontal assault with their small amount of tanks but failed, as the terrain limited the maneuverability of the tanks, and the French 75mm artillery pieces made short work of them. However, some men managed to get around the Vichy defenses and cause chaos within the ranks. Yet, it wouldn't be until the destroyer the HMS Anthony dashed straight past the harbor defenses at Antisirene and landed 50 Royal Marines in the rear of the Vichy defenses. That caused the whole series of defenses to collapse, and the Vichy forces surrendered by nightfall. Still, French forces were heavy in the rest of the island, yet they had no ability to push the British out after the fall of Antisirene and it wouldn't be until November that hostilities finally finished. The island was crucial for the rest of the war, as its deep water ports were vital to control the passageway to India and the Persian Corridor, an area that the Axis were no longer able to contest. This was the first large-scale operation of World War II by the Allies, which combined sea, land, and air forces. Casualties for the operation were largely minimal as well, with the British losing some 600 men compared to 800 for the French. De Gaulle himself, in private, found it almost amusing that the French in Madagascar held out longer than the French in the mainland two years previous. And with that, the tale of the British invasion of Madagascar comes to an end.